Jy luister na RSG Geldsake met MoneyWeb potgooie met gasseer Rijk van die Kerk. Vir die belangrijkste sakenies, skakel in op RSG Geldsake. Kumba Eisterers is die grootste producent van Eisterers op die vasteland en Anglo-American besit so wat 70% van die maatskapie. Die groep het twee primaire bedrijvighede, die grootste is 76% belang in die Session Eisterers mijn in die Noordkaap. Die mijn is een oopgroef mijn en dis 14 kilometer lang en dit maakt het een van die grootste oopgroef mijn in die wereld. Kuma besit ook die Kolomela mijn nabij Postmasburg ook in die Noordkaap. Die maatskapie het vandag resultate vir sy 2023 boekjaar aangekondig. Die omzet het met 16% tot 86 miljard rand gestuig. Die wezensverdienste was 26% hoer op 22,7 miljard rand. Die groepse productie het echter met 5% tot 36 miljoen ton gedaal. En dit spruit grootliks uit die logistieke problemen bij Transnet. Die directie het slotdividend van 24 rand 20 verklaar, wat die totale dividend vir die jaar op 46 rand 80 te staan bring. Die groep het ook aangekondig dat het moendlik 490 werknemers kan afdank. Dit volg nadat Amplats gister aangekondig het dat het sy werksmag met 3700 wil snoei. Mpumi Sigalala is op die lijn, sy is Kumbasse uitvoerende hoof. Mpumi, thank you so much for your time today. You have announced the restructuring process that will affect nearly 500 people, yet your profitability rose by around 26%, which is significant. Can you put this into context? Clearly, you've highlighted the results. I think in addition, just a couple of things, we saw an improvement in our safety performance, which is always something that we essentially look at. But another point that we highlighted was the fact that we actually had to slow down on production in the fourth quarter. And the reason why was because we found ourselves sitting at unprecedented levels of our product stockpiles, which rose up to 9 million tons. And the reason why we slowed down production was because we needed to realign and rebalance our value chain as a result of logistics performance. So the reason for us to initiate a Section 189 process is not one that we've taken easily. It is a difficult one, and it will be a challenging period for our teams. The two key reasons why we are looking at this is simply because where we sit at the moment, our operations are outperforming the logistics network. And that's where we found ourselves with increasing levels of our product stockpiles. And we do need to rebalance the value chain as we reconfigure our business. We started this work last year and we started with other elements of the business. So we had a look at our mine plans and readjusting those. And we had had a look at other structural cost reductions across the business. And as a last resort, we've sadly got into the point where we've initiated the Section 189 process. But we cannot continue running a business that's out of balance and where we find ourselves accumulating stock. I've got to say that that does not mean that we don't believe in the turnaround that's been driven by the National Logistics Crisis Committee. What we recognize is the fact that the right work is being done, but that the results will take some time to translate into a space where we'll get back to levels where we'll find ourselves having more than 40 million tons of logistics capacity. Clearly, the second reason is because when your value chain is out of balance, it actually means that you continue spending money that you don't need to spend because your business will be designed to deliver more than 40 million tons of iron ore, but your logistics will be constrained to the figures that we've guided. I think that's the sad reality, because if Transnet can ship more, you can expand your operations. But you've given guidance about future production levels, which remain relatively static at around 37 million tons. So can we deduce that you don't expect over the next few years there will be a significant increase in the efficiencies at Transnet, even under Michelle Phillips? So I think a couple of things we've guided within a range of 35 to 37 million tons. But what you need to consider as well is the fact that we are currently sitting with high levels of stock. So sitting at just over 7 million tons. And over the next couple of years, we'll clearly be eating into that stock. In addition to that, because that's just the stock that's sitting at the end of the process, which is our saleable production, We are also sitting with high levels of buffers in terms of our own production value chain. 
And we are essentially looking at getting back to normal levels. And then coming back to the Transnet side, I said that we do fully support the National Logistics Crisis Committee. And we've seen strong leadership coming through from Michelle. And what we also like is the fact that Michelle's actually have spent some time getting closer to the customers. What we do, however, realize is the fact that the extent of the challenges mean that it will just take some time for this to get back to the levels that we'd like to get to, which is us getting more than 40 million tons of capacity from a logistics performance perspective. In a perfect world where there are no logistic problems, no electricity supply problems, how significantly can you ramp up Kumba's production? Or put differently, what is the opportunity cost of the logistical and electricity challenges we face here in, in South Africa? So like in a perfect world, we'd want to see ourselves running at historical levels where, as I've said, we've guided at around 35 to 37 million tons, but we've seen ourselves peaking at 42 to 43 million tons. And we'd like to get back to those levels. And I've got to say that clearly it's been difficult looking at this decision because our teams have actually performed exceptionally well. It's just that we can't continue with a value chain that's out of balance. From a Kumba perspective, electricity challenges do not impact us as much. And that's because from a mining perspective, we run with predominantly a diesel powered fleet. But clearly we do work closely as well with ESCOM. It's just that transnet or logistics performance impacts us significantly more. Let's look at the possibility of private operators entering the fray to increase efficiencies at Transnet. You predominantly use the Session Saldana railway line. And my perception is that that is the most efficiently managed Transnet line, especially on the commodity side. Are there prospects of private operators actually operating on that specific line? Yes, we use the INO export channel, which is the Saldana Bay export channel. And one of the things that excites us at the moment is the fact that the freight logistics roadmap was approved by cabinet in December. And that essentially is looking at driving for more private sector participation and not just as Coomba, but as part of the all users forum, which includes other users of the line. We are looking forward to engaging around looking at how best we can actually benefit from this. We do think that concessions could work for the INO export channel, and that's where we are looking forward to having engagements with both Transnet and government. Thank you, Mpumi. That was Mpumi Sigalala, sy is Kumba, sy uitvoerende hoof. Chantal, ja, Mpumi, ja, hartop, sy het bestuur die bezigheid met die Eisterfeis, is een baie goed bestuur die bezigheid, en is jammer oor 490 werksgeleentere wat nou verloor gaan gaan, um, maar nog steeds, ondanks die problemen, rare goeie financiële resultaten. Ja, die eisteraarsprys het verschillende mooi, um, het, het mooi hoog gebleid, terwijl meeste ander komoditeitspryse onder druk gekom het. En natuurlijk die product wat uitkom, wat in myne uitkom, is van so gehalte, dat hulle nog meer as die standaardprys ook krijgen van hulle product. So, ek denk daar het hulle baie gehelp. Natuurlijk kon dit nog beter geweest het, as hulle meer eisteraards kon eisterarts kon uitvoer, en ek denk deel van, hoe kom hulle die afdankings doen, is die probleme by Transnet, wat hulle gaan keer, om, om daai deur te voer. Ja, die aandeelprys uh, die afgelopen 6 maanden 43% op, en as ek so vinnig gesom my kop maak, die dividend opbrengs op hierdie 42 rand, um, dividend wat hulle verklaar het, is baie nabij aan 9%, um, is my nie die dividend onderskat nie? Ja, kijk, met, met die maatskapie moet men skep te wel dit reen, want sodra die eisteraardsprys onder druk kom, dan gaan die winstgevendheid ongelooflik vinnig dal, en dan lyk die dividend weer nie so goed nie. Um, maar verseker een baie goeie bestuurde, goed bestuurde maatskapie, en uh, dit help bykie om een uh, bykie van hipstoot van die buitenkant af te kry. Ja, ek was bykie optimistisch in my hoofreken, uh, dit is 7,7% wat nog steeds nie te versmaai is nie. Baie, baie goed vir alles hier al groot kapitale groei kry. Jy het geluister na RSG Geldzake met Moneyweb potgooie elke weeksdag om 7 namiddag. Vir meer Moneyweb potgooie besoek moneyweb.co.za of laai die toepassing af en volg MoneyWeb News om dagelijks op hoogte te blijven.